it's Saturday morning and you really want to watch a James Bond movie, but you don't have a VCR anywhere in sight. Plus, it's off-season from TBS's James Bond marathons, so I guess the James Bond Jr. animated series will do. James Bond Jr. was the nephew of James Bond, since I guess Son of Bond would open too many questions about who the mother is. I still have questions, though, since Bond was an orphan and an only child. Who is this kid? The character first came from the novel The Adventures of James Bond Jr., 003 and a Half, first published in 1967 by the pseudonym R.D. Mascot. Later, we got an animated series that ran for 65 episodes from 1991 to 1992 and was the story of James Bond Jr.'s adventures at a prep school called Warfield Academy. But it wasn't just a Bond offspring who was there. We also got the grandson of Q named IQ, the son of Felix Leiter, Gordo Leiter, all coming together to fight Son of Spectre, I guess, an organization called Scum. Scum isn't even hiding the fact they're evil. The show would also feature notable villains from the Bond franchise, including Jaws, Nick Knack, Goldfinger, and Odd Job. They've given up going after Bond and figured, oh, maybe it'll be easier to kill his nephew, Ferris Bonder. It stands to reason the show would have plenty of gadgets. Bond Jr. was voiced by Corey Burton, who was Shockwave, Sunstreaker, Brawn, and Spike in Transformers. The show had the full support of MGM Television and United Artists. It was developed by Jack Mendelson, a writer on everything from Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In to Yellow Submarine and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Plus, Mark Jones was a developer on it, too. He was the writer and director of Leprechaun and Rumpelstiltskin. It's a show that I remember watching simply because it was on. It does have a proper pilot, though, as the first episode is literally called The Beginning. And it's where Bond takes on the criminals at U.S. Acres. Bond Jr. is clearly a rebel. He hit like 12 raccoons on his way to prep school. This is where we could get a G.I. Joe crossover, considering how many lasers are being shot at him. I joke, but this was my favorite level in Cruisin' Exotica. Don't forget the hidden ramp shortcut. Now, which Bond would he be the nephew of? Connery? Dalton? Brosnan? Pity they missed their flight. These Sunday drivers. Definitely Roger Moore's nephew. The Creeper from Jeepers Creepers is pissed, by the way, right along with his sidekick, Spuds McKenzie. Actually, this is one of the main villains on the show, Scumlord, the head of Scum, which is like Blofeld, the head of Blow. But don't forget, every great Bond adventure has a kickin' theme. Bond. James Bond Jr. Eh, uh, yeah, that'll work. It's way better than the last one by Sam Smith. Warfield Academy looks like it could also serve to train the young Kingsman. It doesn't really matter. Bond Jr. is the maverick of this academy. Whoa! It's an Aston Martin DB5! Yeah, I'm gonna need that toy for my collection. Let's see that Bond charm. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Mr. Bond. James Bond. Jr. That doesn't sound as cool as Bond, James Bond. This kid's the son of Operation Kid Brother, isn't he? That's the universe this is taking place in. The way he's dressed, I feel like he's dying for a Nintendo tournament with Captain N, the Game Master. What a dump. He has to stay in this castle dorm and put up with his roommate, IQ. Oh, Horace Boothroyd, actually. Uh, but my friends call me uh, IQ. Yeah, I'm gonna call you human Bobby Zimmeruski. At least he could probably make an egg. <laughs> I believe the yoke's on us. Your uncle has now disowned you because of that line. Just like I'm sure Felix Leiter did to Gordo. It, like I feel a tubular wave coming on! Whoa! Hang ten, my man! Uh, the grades here aren't the only disappointments. But there is Tracy Milbanks, daughter of the headmaster, and there's also everyone else who is into Bond. Oh, brother, what the fuck? I'm James Bond. You certainly are. Yeah, you're only into him because you didn't hear his yoke joke earlier. 
Every school needs an enemy, though, and this one has the snooty Trevor Noseworth the fourth. Well, sorry about that, old chap. You deliberately tripped IQ. Don't mind him. He's still mad from his wedding to Lisa Simpson being called off. They need some extra security here, since scum lords and Jaws are just able to watch the students. They desperately want to get to James's car, which contains an electromagnetic pulse generator that they want. That was supposed to be a CD player. Honest mistake. Since Jaws is evil again, I guess this means he was dumped by Dolly? And now wants Bond's whole family dead. They set it up to where Bond has to go get a package from the post office, but oh no, he's grounded, which involves some sneaking around, just like the time Goldfinger grounded Bond on his ranch. Plus, Scumlord raised the price of stamps, those diabolical bastards. Oh, and Jaws steals the car, too. Someone else has the car! Worse than that, he has Tracy! Oh shit, Tracy, I don't know how to tell you this, James, but things aren't gonna end well for Tracy. But Bond Jr. has the best of friends to help him out, I'm sure, somewhere in the world. Tracy's my best friend. If she's in trouble, then I want to help. Could you not? My ears, they're hurting. Well, let's put the pedal to the metal, dudes! In fact, could all of you just hang back for a while? It's gonna turn out this was all just practice for his upcoming Spy Hunter competition with Captain N. Before getting the car back, though, he's gonna need that watch calculator. In addition to the rockets, there's a small bus saw. Then Bond accidentally sawed his wrist and died. Ugh, sounds Yakola. So what do we do now, dude? Oh, did I say accidentally? Gordo Lighter may have had a hand in it. When Sheriff Pepper was the more dignified comic relief. During this daring rescue, it doesn't take him long to be found by Jaws. <laughs> Don't cut to a commercial now, I need to know whether or not they die. And don't worry, the watch does come in handy. Better cover your eyes, Tracy. And then he used the saw to make themselves a turkey sandwich. Since it's so loud in there, they could probably make all the noise they want. No, see what that noise was. Never mind, you forgot about Scum's super hearing implants. But let's not forget that Bond Jr. is still an amateur. Don't worry, Tracy. I'm not that crazy. The beginning was also the end for James Bond Jr. Or not, since Jaws is going for dessert after eating that vehicle in The Spy Who Loved Me. And all it took was repeatedly ramming a cockpit door to finally get a dog reaction. Going down! Oh, there's no need to be upset. It looks like you could pretty much survive anything in this animated universe. Well, there's another one Leslie can try on for size. I guess Bond Jr. does get shit done, all before having to race back to make sure no one knows he snuck off school grounds. And for this little interruption, you can spend a week in detention. But Mr. Milbank, sir... <laughs> that seems harsh. What's the penalty for actually skipping school? Death? Plus, he had a legit reason for sneaking out. There was world domination stuff going on. He should be able to explain that. That pulse generator was never in the Aston Martin at all. And we were misinformed. Well, this was, uh, just a waste of everybody's time then. At least his uncle, 007, gave him the gift of a new car. He's also gonna send a dozen hookers with gambling addictions to his room in about an hour. Come on, IQ. Let's race off and get to the nearest cat house. Imagine what I could do with this car. Oh, no, you don't. Eh, all IQ wanted to do was just find a way to reverse the clock and watch the Where's Waldo animated series instead. While James Bond Jr. may have just lasted a year, albeit still with 65 episodes, it certainly inspired a lot of merchandising and tie-ins. There was a 1992 comic book series, there were video games on the NES and Super Nintendo, a John Peel novelization, a board game, and of course, a huge toy line. It's an easy show to find, too. There's plenty of surviving copies with good quality, since the show did have an official VHS release back in 92. Sure, you could get into 
all that, but I'd rather just focus on the Bond movies for the cinema snob. A TBS marathon could happen at any minute. Subscribe to us today at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. Don't forget to click the notification bell and check out our recent Cinema Snob episode on the 1954 TV adaptation of Casino Royale. See you next time.